BZ Madden is one of America's most decorated Grand Prix riders. I had a chance to catch up with the show jumping star fresh off another victory at the Dublin Horse Show in Ireland. What does it mean to you to win at Dublin representing the United States? Well, it was a great feeling. I won the first big class on Wednesday, and it's always good to come here and know that your horse is comfortable. I think it's a special horse, and uh, I always think he deserves to win, so <laughs> it's always exciting. He is an absolutely amazing horse. What is it that makes him so special and gives him the ability to jump so huge? Well, he has a lot of quality, and he has a lot of ambition just to go out and do something. He is happy to be busy all the time, and so I think he somewhat enjoys his, actually enjoys his job and he seems to understand to jump over the fences and uh, he's just uh, enthusiastic and careful and scopy and he's, he's everything you can ask for. Beezy continued her winning streak with judgment to tie for the high jump win in the six bar. He's a real powerful jumper. He's actually done a six bar once before in Syracuse so he had a little practice at it and he just seemed happy in there yesterday. When you ride through the six bar, how is it different for you as a rider? Well, basically it's just a big gymnastic exercise. So you want to come in off of just a real medium stride with the horse very balanced. And then mostly the horse has to help you through the whole thing. The distance was short and then it would get shorter and shorter as you went. So you did have to help them when you landed from one fence, keep your balance, put them back on their hocks to be able to jump the next fence off a short distance. But I have to admit it's mostly up to the horse in that competition. How do you keep him fresh? You know, going from a six bar, he went in the Grand Prix today, jumped a spectacular round and his back toes are yeah. so tight and so high and one would think he'd be tired from the six bar. Like I say, he's such a powerful jumper that I think the six bar is not that difficult for him. So luckily, I don't think it took a lot out of him. And then today's class, uh, I don't know, it's a new day. He's fit, he's an athlete, and uh, he was ready to go. How is he different from riding authentic? Authentic is a lot quicker thinker, so I always have to try to be thinking ahead of him a little bit because uh, he is such a game little guy that he is going to be ready to take on anything, and mostly I have to kind of channel that in the right direction. Judgment is a little bit more bigger, slower stride, more of a powerhouse jumper, and he takes a little more accuracy and placement and balance, and he needs more help that way. Authentic, he's easy for me basically because I just have to slow his thinking down and slow his brain down a little bit, and that's really all there is to it. Is one more challenging than the other for you to ride in your own personal riding style? I'd say when I got Judgment, he was a more of a challenge for me. I blended naturally with authentic, but now I think judgment's gone a little my way. I've gone a little his way. I've learned how to ride that kind of horse, and uh, he's actually pretty easy for me to ride now. He's he knows the routine. He he's an experienced horse now. He's 14 years old. He's been a lot of places, and uh, he's just a trooper. <laughs> Do you find that there's a difference in how you train and manage a stallion versus a gelding? Well, you definitely have to make sure the stallion stays fresh enough. I was a little worried coming into this tour that he wasn't fresh enough. We didn't originally plan on bringing him. This was supposed to be a little bit of a downtime for him, but because of some circumstances with another horse, uh, he was he was up again for, <laughs> for the tour, and he's been great. Like I said, he's fit. He's the type of horse you have to keep fit anyway. Authentic, you almost have to be careful how fit you keep him. He's always enthusiastic, but you also want to be careful not to erode away at that, too. You want to make sure he stays that way. So it's basically a little the same. They all need some downtime. They all need to be as fit as you can to keep them healthy, and uh, it's really a lot of the same. Are you pleased with both of them at this stage in the tour? Oh yeah, very pleased. Um, this is uh, Authentic's first big tour here where he's been over here a consistent amount of time and been on Nations Cups and uh, he's, he's done beautifully so far. And uh, Judgment, like I said, he, he's done every kind of class there is to do. He's kind of the, he, the backup or the... Sometimes I use him as my first horse when we were in Le Bol, He did the Nations Cup and the Grand Prix. He did the Grand Prix in Rome. Uh, in Spruce Meadows, he did everything. He did the speeds. He did uh, big classes, and uh, he's just been great at all of them. Watching you ride, you're such a beautiful rider. What is it like for you to work with George Morris? Well, it's been great. He's been a terrific chef to keep. He's uh, 
what he gives me is a little security that what we're doing is right and also some motivation that yes we can do it as a team and we can win and let's go out there and do it and he's terrific at that. How is riding for a team different from riding individually? Your colleagues you're normally competing against head to head in Grand Prix at home. Well, and I have to say I'll credit to George with that too. He keeps us together as a team um, and I think it makes us all want to blend as a team as well. We've been, uh, I think everybody's on the same page with that. Both tours I've done have been great like that. It makes it more fun. You have more people to root for and also a little more pressure when it comes time for the Nations Cup. It's fun to root for other people and feel like you can have success through them also. Do you find in a pressured situation, does that pressure help you get more in the zone? I would say definitely it does. When the uh, I mean, I've been the last rider two times here and also at the Olympics, and especially at the Olympics, I have to say, when I went in for the last round, I was, at first I was thinking my round wasn't going to mean much, but then when I got to the gate, I found out that if I went clear, we were going to jump off for a silver medal, and it actually excited me that I could do something to help the team and that my round was going to mean something and we still had a chance to medal, so it definitely motivates you. Well, you certainly mean a lot to all of America, and we're so thrilled you're representing us. One thing that I have noticed repeatedly, and it's so special to me as a horse lover, I always see you patting your horse when the rounds are done in the most kind and affectionate way, no matter what goes on in the ring. Of all the horses you've had, who is the most special to you and why? You know, when you really think about it, they're all special for what we ask them to do. I mean, they do amazing things from competing in the rain to traveling on airplanes to being a pet to some child that comes to pet them. Um, I think anything they do, they're special. But um, I'd probably, uh, I mean, Authentic's probably the best horse I've ever had. He has an unbelievably funny personality. I'd say he's probably my favorite, partly because we have him now and partly because I think he's maybe one of those once-in-a-lifetime horses. Throughout your career, who has influenced you the most and why? I think I've taken influence from a lot of people. I mean, when I rode with uh, Katie Prudent, she really got me started in jumpers, so I'd have to say she had a huge influence. My husband, John, we've been together now since 1988 basically building the whole program, finding the horses, developing a relationship with owners and sponsors throughout the years. He's had a huge, I mean, he does most all, all of that and uh, I can be able to concentrate on the riding. And then you take little things, I mean, I learn something every day from George. I learn something from Johan Heinz who is our kind of partner basically in, in Europe. We get all our horses through him. The horses go to his place in between shows in Europe and uh, He's been a great influence. Uh, I mean, there's so many people, but I'd say those are the, the, the biggest. Well, you are a great inspiration to many young people in the United States and all over the world that aspire to ride like you. What advice would you give to young people? You have to try to get with good people that are at the top of this game in their sport um, at whatever level you're at and do whatever they ask you to do to and somebody will notice you and then you can uh, work your way up no matter what. <laughs> and one last question, what can we expect to see from you over the next decade? A decade? A decade, <laughs> we're planning ahead. Um, well, obviously I, my goals would obviously be the world championships next year and hopefully the Olympics to follow. And we're really concentrating on bringing along young horses at the same time so that we can always be in this position. We have a beautiful strain of horses now and uh, you don't want to just rest on your laurels and not have anything coming up so we have a big push for that too and I think we've got some nice young ones at home so hopefully just to continue what we're doing.